Glover is a 1998 platformer developed by Interactive Studios and published by Hasbro Interactive. The story is relatively simple. After one of the magic spells by the wizard goes haywire, Glover has to save the crystals by transforming them into balls that he has to collect in six of the worlds throughout the Crystal Kingdom. Unfortunately, one of the wizard's gloves slips into the magic concoction and turns evil. I think the intro to this game was short and sweet and done extremely well and gets you into the vibe of what's coming up next. To me at least, Glover was advertised as a kid-friendly game, and for the most part, it can be silly at times, but the intro to this game is nothing but gloomy, unsettling, startling, a desolate realm caked in shadow. Eerie mists cling to the ground, shrouding the uneven terrain in an otherworldly haze. The air is heavy with unsettling stillness, and an unnerving laugh that you can't get out of your head. The crumbling structure of what once was your castle lays on the ground, destroyed. The land is scarred by time, and there seems to be no way to fix it. No sunlight, no green grass, nothing promising in sight. Your first step into the hub world of Glover is one of the most uncomfortable experiences I've had in gaming. Whether that has to do a bit with the N64's graphical limitation at the time, I'm not sure but something about these old games just makes them so much scarier. There's noises of crows and vultures in the background that give off some sort of fear of death and the unknown. It's really just such a dark tone for an N64 game, in my opinion, that was targeted at children. You really didn't see this sort of stuff from Nintendo at this day and age. And as a kid growing up playing this game, I can tell you I was absolutely frightened in these early moments. It truly is such a weird and odd experience, and the setting that you're thrown in is one of the darkest that I've seen on the console. And then you randomly stumble into this bird that's crapping itself. The developers knew what they were doing with the tone of this game. The first time you enter Atlantis, you get an absolutely killer track, giving you the confidence to move on and complete this journey. The six realms that Glover takes part in are Atlantis, Carnival, Pirates, Prehistoric, Fortress of Fear, and Out of This World. All six feature some amazing music and tons of attention to detail, making for a ton of very interesting puzzles with the ball mechanic. I found the designs of the levels, enemies, and bosses incredibly interesting and unique in this game. The first realm, Atlantis, is based off the lost city of Atlantis. Tons of ancient structures and water fill this realm. The carnival realm is full of rides and chance games. The pirates realm features a ton of beaches, pirate ships, and monkeys. The prehistoric realm focuses on a land where dinosaurs live with an ice age setting and also a volcanic setting. The Fortress of Fear world has a lot of different spells and creatures. The Out of This World realm is exactly what it sounds like. It takes place in outer space and it's got some really kooky creatures here. The designs of the monsters in this game really are fascinating and each realm has a really good feel to it. And I feel like they didn't go to standard level design or also the standard worlds you find in platformers. There's some really unique ideas and designs that take place here. On top of the music, with the level design and puzzles, I really feel like you have something really special here with Glover. The game definitely did get some positive feedback from critics, but I think it's a hidden gem. I don't think enough people know about Glover, and although the game is a bit challenging and the mechanics are a little odd, I had a lot of fun playing it. And I feel like the atmosphere really can't be touched. I only wanted to focus this video on the hub world, 
the Crystal Kingdom, but I found it very intriguing to go back and look at the realms themselves and take a deeper dive. Other platformers during this era were not as imaginative or creative as well. The themes that they chose to use for them were strayed far away from what you usually see from platformers during this era. There's a ton of floating platforms and pathways, and awkward platforms that you have to navigate your ball on. The world of Glover is designed to be visually captivating, with a blend of fantasy and adventure. Each level really does offer a unique and immersive experience, and the journey through this game just keeps giving you different challenges. Whether you're in a medieval castle, or playing carnival games in a giant circus, or exploring an underwater world, or traveling through a haunted forest. There's just a lot going on in this game, and I think a lot of people overlooked it. I really was just going to make a video, like I said, focusing on the Crystal Kingdom's hub world itself, and how spooky it was for the time, but when you dive deeper into the other realms they made for this game, there really is a lot going on here, especially for the limitations the Nintendo 64 had. And as I tried to stress before, the more you play Glover, the goofier it gets. The more you realize a lot of the enemies and sound effects are just funny. The goofy, charming setting that Glover provides only shows itself as you progress through the game. Once you start completing realms and collecting gems, the world starts going back to what the Crystal Kingdom was before the accident. All of a sudden you'll start to notice the world is happier. Everything's better. The sun is shining, the grass is green again. It makes you feel like you've done something good. And for what many consider an afterthought N64 game, I found a lot of this impressive, scary, frightening, funny, and a good time. And that's why, in my opinion, Glover has immaculate vibes. And it's a game I think everyone should experience. Glover's a diamond in the rough. Just gotta give it a chance.